Question one, what do you think the title means? The title is the Shawshank Redemption. Uh, some of you chose this question. Some of you did not choose this question, but ended up talking about it anyway. Uh, so the main word in this title is redemption. Redemption means to save someone or yourself after that person has done something wrong. Uh, and so it's a religious word. Most people think about the story of uh, Jesus in the Bible. And in fact, some critics have mentioned that this story feels a bit like Jesus' story. Innocent person comes into a situation, suffers, leaves after changing people's lives, and after he leaves, everybody keeps talking about him and they find hope because of him. Sounds kind of like Jesus. Uh, but if we leave that aside, what kind of redemption happens in this story? Andy did not commit the crime that he was convicted of. So it's hard to say that he had to be redeemed. Uh, I think the clearest case would be Red, right? Red, who was guilty uh, because he met Andy. He was able to talk about himself more honestly in front of the parole board. And so they finally let him leave on parole. Uh, and because, again, he met Andy and Andy had left him a path to follow when he uh, found himself unable to adjust to society, he could find another way out of his situation and rejoin Andy in Mexico. So it does seem like the word redemption applies best to red. What about the other characters who are still in prison? Uh, they don't leave early, but it does seem to be that their time in prison is no longer as boring or meaningless. Um, so, you know, after Andy leaves, Red says that they still talk about him and they still joke about him. It seems like Andy has become their source of hope. Uh, you also have people who ha have been influenced by Andy, like Johnny, the, the young kid with the really great hair. He passed his uh, general education diploma. Of course, he was later killed by the warden. Uh, but for a few moments there, uh, his life had more meaning to it. He set a goal for himself, and for once in his life, he achieved that goal. That kind of thing really changes a person. Uh, and then finally, we have the warden and the guards. Redeemed in the sense that they got the punishment they deserve, and so if they ever felt any kind of guilt, uh, now they don't have to keep it all inside. Uh, what, what is the saying? The truth will set you free, but first it'll hurt. Uh, and so that's kind of what happens to the warden and the guard. So in a sense, uh, Andy has also set them on a path toward redemption as well. Um, it's interesting to also think about the second word in the title, Shawshank, real word. Uh, but we can divide it into two halves. Shaw as a name and shank is a kind of weapon that you might make in prison, something sharp. And so giving this name to the prison really uh, lets us feel that it's a dangerous and cruel place. And it's into this kind of environment that Andy enters, and that's where he works his miracles, so to speak. Yeah, I think Red even calls his escape a miracle, right? Okay, question two. This is the most popular question today. Red says hope has no place on the inside of a prison. Um, most groups agreed. They agreed that if, like Red, you had no hope of ever leaving, then uh, no chance of ever leaving, then hope itself is false hope. It's an illusion. 
could be dangerous. Um, but some groups also mentioned that there's it, it could depend on the person. We know that Red committed his crime and he keeps getting rejected for parole. So he himself believes that he will never leave. But somebody like Andy, who knows he did not commit the crime and he plans to leave, that hope is really what gets him out of prison. Uh, and we can even say that uh, before Andy leaves, he tells Red, you know, if you ever get out, go to this place and then come find me. And that maybe gives Red some hope also. So why is his final parole application successful? Maybe because he entered that interview with hope. Uh, or like the, the kind of hope that says, maybe I need to try something different. Uh, and that perhaps led to his sincere discussion of his own crime and guilt. And that is what got him paroled. So in that case, it is true that hope has no place on the inside of a prison. But if you're, tr if you're trying to get out of a prison, then hope could be very important. Uh, but then that also raises the question of like, why does Andy try to give people hope? Remember when he gets the books and the opera and he puts on the opera? Uh, and like afterwards, everybody asks him, like, why did you do it? And Andy is talking about like music is something that can't take away from you. It will take you to a different part of your life. He's talking about hope. But these other guys probably will not leave the prison. So why is it important for them to have hope? Or like Red, is it like Red says, Andy is just making them suffer even more? Um, I think it is possible for any prisoner to gain parole. And once you gain parole, you could be the person who is connected to question three, too institutionalized to fit back into society. Or you could be the person like Red, who because he has hope, finds a way to adapt. Uh, so even for somebody who is currently inside prison, and it looks like they may have no chance to get out, hope could still give them a chance. It hope stood, uh, still could carry them all the way back into rejoining society. And that brings us to question three. Uh, one group chose this question. How long do you think it takes for somebody to become institutionalized to find it hard to fit back into society? Well, in the film, the only two cases, I guess three, three cases we see, one is an innocent person who doesn't have this problem, and the other two are old people. Uh, and it seems uh, logical to think that after spending almost all of their life in prison, they find it hard to rejoin society. But do you really need to spend all your life in prison to reach that point? What if you only spent 20 years? What if you only spent 10 years? Five years, two years? Can you imagine how society will have changed if you leave it for two years and then come back. Like in prison, nothing really changes. Uh, day in, day out, it's the same routine. But as the film showed, society can change quite fast. Think about the past year. Think about how many new things have appeared. Think about the changes we have faced in society. Or uh, the past four years, from 2019 to today, think about all of the huge changes we've been through. A prison sentence that is five years long is longer than it took for us to get through the pandemic, the Trump administration, 
the war in Ukraine and the uh, availability of ChatGPT. So like when uh, somebody is sentenced to prison for five years, it may not sound like a long time, but that's because we in society are following these changes. They happen gradually for us. But if you leave for five years and you come back, all of those changes happen at the same time. And that is a huge difference. So the one group who chose uh, this question also mentioned uh, the mandatory military service that men in Taiwan have to do. Uh, previously, it was shorter and shorter. Now it's one year. And uh, this group mentioned that it's kind of similar in the sense that in the military, most things don't change day to day. Everything is very routine and you have to follow orders most of the time. So when you enter the military and you leave after one year, you also have to uh, get used to these new changes in society throughout that year. At the same time, in the military, you still have break time. When you rest, you can still use your phone. And so you're not completely separated from society. So it's similar, but at the level of like knowledge and information, it's not completely separate. So like the next time on the news, you see like somebody was sentenced to like, I don't know, six months for doing something bad. Instead of thinking, what, only six months? Try to think about how different society might be after six months for that person. Question four, can you tell that this was adapted from a horror story? Or I guess not a horror story, a story by a horror novelist. There's a difference. The original story is not scary. Uh, and it also lacks a lot of the things that we usually associate with horror that we talked about when we talked about Jennifer's body. But there are still some things that are similar to a horror story. For example, um, when Andy is first getting bullied after like joining prison not long after, those camera angles are also like horror film camera angles, right? We see him coming toward the camera and we don't see uh, what he sees. We don't see the danger in the environment until the bullies come out from the shadows. Um, and of course, there's always in the prison of the film, there's always that feeling of danger and losing control because the warden and the guards are evil. And so you never really know when something bad will happen. That part also is kind of like a horror story. Uh, one last point I think is similar to some horror stories is the, related to question five. So you'll notice that question five looks a bit different than it usually does. Sometimes I will ask, what do you think is the message of the film? But today I'm asking, do you think the film has a message? Because to me, it's not obvious that there is a message. There could be, and one group took this question and they found the message. But to me, it's not a very clear message. Uh, to me, when I'm watching this film, the, the main experience I have is the experience of watching this story and understanding and feeling this story. But I don't have a strong sense that the story itself has some kind of point. It just seems to be entertainment. And in that sense, it can also be like some horror stories. Some horror stories do have a point. They want to talk about abuse, trauma, violence, the dark side of the human spirit. But some horror stories just want to scare you. That's it. Uh, and at least to me, I think this film is more like the kind of horror story that wants to give you an experience instead of an idea. Not necessarily a bad thing. 
uh, every good story needs to give you a uh, memorable experience. That's one part of literature also. And that brings us to question five. Does the film have a message? Uh, so I presented the answer no, but the group that took this question found a message and they think the message is no matter how you got into a situation, whether you deserve to be there or you're just unlucky, you are never entirely determined by your situation. You can always be more than your situation. So like in the movie, Andy does, does not deserve to be in prison. Red does deserve to be in prison. But by the end, both of them manage to get out and find freedom and happiness together. Um, and they do that in different ways. But the point is that there's always a chance to rise above your situation. Even like the other prisoners in the film, their lives are also improved even if they don't leave the prison. And the, one of the main reasons why their lives improve is because of Andy and their relationship with Andy. Um, so it's always possible. Uh, for things to improve. Okay, questions? Right, so for the rest of today, I will uh, give this time to you to discuss final preparations for next week's group project. And I want to remind each group to please send me the YouTube link of your video by next Wednesday. And I will put the link onto Moodle. And so during class, uh, I will be able to directly play your video. Uh, so next week, a uh, reminder, what will happen next week is um, I will first remind you about the, the scoring rules, peer review, uh, and then I will invite group one onto the stage. They can send one person. They can send 10 people. I don't care. And the person on stage will use English to introduce their short film. Um, hang on. So when you first get on stage, I will ask you privately if I can record your introduction. And you can say no if you want to. Um, so depending on whether you agree or not, I may or may not record the introduction, but I will not record your short film. That will already be on YouTube. I mean, you can leave it private, but I won't record it into the uh, Teams recording. So uh, then you introduce the short film. Think of how you want the audience to understand your short film. How do you want to prepare them to watch your short film? Uh, and then I will play the short film. And then after that, uh, you will come back on stage and you will answer any questions from the audience or from me. And then group two, same thing, uh, come up. I will ask if you allow me to record your introduction and then you will introduce the short film, we'll play it and you come back and answer questions. We have eight groups. So after group four, we will take a short break and then we'll come back and do groups five to eight. Uh, and then uh, before midnight on that day, you have to fill out the peer review score sheet and upload it to Moodle. If you don't, your own grade will be negatively influenced. Okay, questions? Great. So uh, the rest of today is your time. <laughs>